Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. We are back in the studio, back in Chennai, and it's been raining. And why has it been raining? Because it's time for Q&A. So, without wasting much time, we will directly jump into your questions and try to answer them to the best of our ability. Anand is behind the camera on the other side. So, if we really start fuddling and muddling our answers, Anand will step in and say, Boss, that's not right what you're saying. So, be rest assured, the teachers in the room, the answers should be pretty much perfect. Okay, first one, Shin Shan, four days ago, he's asked us, great conversation fellows. My question is stock picking and mutual picking funds, which one is better? Why Anand said often suggests not to invest on mutual funds and tell the drawback of mutual funds. Why Shashwat, comparing stock picking and mutual fund picking, Anand always suggests to stick to stocks and not mutual funds. Please explain why. So in mutual funds, there are two types. You have your actively managed and your passively managed. And under passively managed, you have your index funds. I'm sure that he hasn't uh, said that you shouldn't invest in index funds. In fact, he's been an advocate for index funds. Because index funds means that you have very low costs. You're betting on India as a country and uh, that's, that's that. But um, as for stock picking, if you're good at it, then you definitely have a chance to beat the market. And that's what Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, you can dig it up in one of his uh, interviews in the CNBC archive, one of his annual general meetings, he says that uh, if you're an individual stock picker, you should be able to beat the market by 50% every year. And Warren Buffett says that if given a small sum of money, his small sum of money is anything less than $1 million, he'll be able to beat the market by 50% year on year. That's his guarantee. So you don't have to be Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett doesn't do something extremely out of the reach of the ordinary investor. All he does is he's prudent in how he does it. So as an investor, if you have the time and you have the patience for it, then and you have the metal for it, then you definitely can invest in individual stocks. But uh, as for the general public, they just want to invest and forget about it. And for them, passively managed index funds definitely make sense. Fantastic. Your answer is very, very correct and spot on. I couldn't have said it any better. Then Narul R is asking, please give a, a brief types of bonds and the pros and cons of these types of bonds. So you have two separate uh, categories. One, government and state bonds, which are issued by the authorities. And then you have your uh, corporate bonds. Under corporate bonds, there are again two types, your junk bonds and then your uh, highly rated corporate bonds. The place where, so junk bonds, it's in the name. It's uh, very high risk and uh, you the risk of repayment is very high. So you don't know whether the guy is going to default or not. That's And you get high yields according to that. But uh, I don't have the risk appetite for junk bonds and I don't think you should either because corporate bonds already yield a good amount of money and highly rated corporate bonds are something which you can definitely look at. As for government bonds, they are considered the safest assets in terms of investing and that is considered the risk-free rate of return. So if you want absolutely no risk, the sovereign can never default on their treasuries because if they do, then you pretty much can't believe in the rupee anymore or the dollar. Very true. So if you're betting on it, there's practically supposed to be no risk. So that's your difference. So the yield available on bonds go from uh, government bonds at the lowest then you have your highly rated corporate bonds and then your junk bonds that's how you look at it fantastic i have today we've got two on two going forward mallika sarampat kumar says hi please talk about compounding in a stock and in a portfolio how does it compound in long term so compounding can happen in two ways one you're compounding it separately from the stock in the sense that uh, Whatever returns you're getting in the stock in terms of dividend yield and uh, your yield on uh, bonds that you can take and then put it back into the asset and your stock is growing in terms of earnings at a certain rate. And whatever dividend yield you get, there's something called the Gordon's equation, which is dividend yield plus growth rate, which will give you your absolute return. So that is something which you can do. But uh, that is compounding, which is under your control. Compounding outside your control is when you buy a company uh, or stock of a company and what they do with their free cash flow, whether they choose to give you that or whether they choose to invest it back into the company and their growth rate uh, accounts for it. So there are only two ways you can get returns from a company, either through the dividend yield which you're getting or number two, you're getting it through growth. If the company is spewing free cash flow and not giving it to you in dividend yields, nor is it showing growth, then you have a problem. Fantastic. Then sovereign and money. He says, guys, 
Could you share some more details about investing in the SP500 versus the Nifty 50? US is already de a developed market, whereas India is expected to see high growth in the near future. Currently, I am sipping in the Nifty. Can I shift it to S&P completely? I wouldn't advise you to completely shift it to S&P, partly for two reasons. One, it's better to hedge your bets everywhere and not in one place. That's a common, uh, this thing, sense. But a bit deeper if you go into it is that, uh, yes, the S&P 500 is a great place to invest. The dollar is a great avenue for you to make a bet on. But that being said, it's better that uh, you invest in India as well because, as you said, the uh, growth rate is supposed to be better. And regardless of what political party comes into power, the country is still going to remain um, as it is in the sense that uh, it's a developing economy and we'll definitely see a lot of growth coming into the future. So that being said, the US, as you said, is an exhausted market. But the caveat here is that... Uh, the S&P 500 does not only include stagnant companies, it also includes your high growth companies which get True. inducted into it. So to make a generalized statement saying you'll see more growth in the Nifty and not much in the S&P is incorrect to a large extent because you have your AI companies which will make its way into S&P 500. And if you keep sipping in the S&P 500, you'll be a part owner of those companies as well. Then he asks a question further. He's asked, would you throw some thought or light on the passive Nifty 50 mutual fund versus the 50 Nifty 50 ETF, which is better in the long run? As long as it's passively managed and it's uh, tracking the index, you have no problems. Very good. There's this person called Abhilash Ravi Chandran who has been going in all our videos and kind of uh, repeatedly asking the same question. So I think I should give him a break because the poor man's been at it. So uh, Abhilash has asked, so I saw a video about Nifty moment 30, value 20, quality 30, and low volume 30 index, which are significantly beating Nifty 50 index. So what are your thoughts on this? Would like you guys to discuss about this in Be Rich and Money Pechu so everyone will know about it. And after the discussion, will you still recommend Nifty 50 for the long term, like 30, 40 years of investing? Can you repeat the list of... Yeah, I think you've read this question quite a few times. Yeah. A video about Nifty moment 30, value 20, quality 30, low volume 30 indexes. Look, there are many classifications and under that also you have your Nifty IT index, you have your healthcare and then you have your energy and so and so on. It completely depends on what you think is uh, best for you. We're not investment advisors, we're not SEBI registered. We do not know the differences between these and uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you but that's something which I have to disclaim in this video. And that being said, the Nifty 50 is a bet on India. And if it's a bet you want to take, then go ahead and place it. And the Nifty 50 is a nice general mix of all the sectors, growing sectors, and this broadly covers the market wholly in a wholesome manner. So if you're looking at it, it's holistic. And in the long term, companies can keep coming in and out of the Nifty. But the Nifty will keep on growing because it is on growth based and the Indian economy based and it is something which is fundamental to us. So you don't have to worry about the Nifty 50. The other indexes, like he said correctly, we do not know. We're not experts in the subject matter and we're sorry to disappoint you. We cannot advise you on something which we do not know, nor can we claim to talk about it when we do not know. Yeah. So I hope you're satisfied with that answer and it gives you a break from repeatedly asking us this question. The reason why we're not a approach this question before is we don't have an answer for it. Then we have Velayiram. Hi guys, in your Q&A, tell us about investing on US stock markets and how do US markets change, changes have an impact on Indian markets. Discuss more about economic fundamentals. So you want to know how do you invest in US stock markets and how does the US stock market affect the Indian stock market? As for investing in the US stock market, your, all your big brokers offer you the option to invest in the US. I think even HDFC has a, an option, although I, I haven't used it. So complete disclaimer that I do not know which one's the best one. So if you just Google it, you'll get your answer. But as for the um, other question you asked, how does the US stock market affect the Indian stock market? This is a macroeconomic explanation. The US is completely linked with India because if the US stock market doesn't give people returns, which is what was happening for the past 10 years, where you had very little yield, you had zero interest rates, money was flowing and uh, there wasn't enough assets where uh, the money could go. 
that's when you see the money washing onto our shows and uh, you have your foreign portfolio investors who come in and pump up the nifty and they generally pump up the mnc companies and your uh, your unilevers your nestles and they hold on to it so that's how you see all these companies at elevated pe's which you can never touch with even a 10 foot pole as my other uncle says so the idea here is that uh, the US stock market tells you how much money is floating in the system. It's the leading indicator for how your country is going to perform. If the US is performing badly, you can be certain that your country is also definitely going to perform badly. Well said. Arun B is asking this. How you guys know in and out of companies? Teach us how to gather authentic information from this noisy world. Also explain how to learn about a particular sector or a business as an investor. Guide us, please. They want to know how do you do research. Yeah. The best way to do it is to first pick companies you want to look at. And these can be companies which Peter Lynch says uh, he gives the parable of the fireman who buys a company of his own stock. Uh, sorry, buys a stock of his own company and he makes a lot of money. So in this way, he also talks about going to your grocery store and seeing what products you buy. That's how ITC became such a big pick for my other uncle because if you look at all the products you buy, your Rashirvad or your Fiamma Devils, all of that comes under ITC. So if that's a company which you're using a lot and you believe in, that is a company you can look at. Another way to do this, according to fundamentals, would be to use a tool called Screener.in, which is what I use to go and sift through companies. And if you have a solid understanding of fundamentals, that is a tool which you can definitely use. It's free to use and Absolutely anyone can free. use it. Yes. And the best way to collect information on a company is to dive into your annual reports, your 10K. 10K for the US companies. So this is the only way for you to do research. There's no shorthand way for you to no, get information good. without... Uh, you have to read. Yes. Okay, there's an interesting conversation Velu Swami and Bhuvi have had. Velu Swami is asked, will deflation occur in India? What happens to our economy if we have deflation over five years? And Bhuvi has replied to his comment saying, there is no room as of now our, in our, and in our foreseeable future. What is your opinion on this? Deflation is something, according to the technical term, deflation would be negative inflation. That is never going to happen for the time coming because you have the RBI which will always be willing to step in to stop that. Even in the US, you won't see deflation uh, unless there are extenuous, extenuous uh, circumstances which cause that. But the Federal Reserve will immediately pump money in. That's what happened during the COVID uh, recession. India for one quarter faced a 23% uh, decline in their GDP. Price levels went down. But then very soon the Fed stepped in and so did the RBI. Deflation spells doom. And a book I'd recommend you read is Irving Fisher's uh, Booms and uh, Busts. It's something which uh, talks about why deflation is such a potent enemy and why deflation is more dangerous than inflation. So you will have a Fed chairman or an RBI governor who's willing to let inflation run away, but you will not have one of them who will let deflation creep in. The good analogy for all of you guys will be like your, if you have diabetes or know someone with diabetes with sugar. They'll always say having a slightly high sugar or even high sugar is okay, but you should never allow your sugar to go down. If you cause low sugar can kill you. High sugar over a long period of time will do damage, but low sugar in the short term will destroy you. So that is something you can keep in mind when you think of inflation and deflation. Vigneshwaran Pichamani is asking a long question. So let me read it out so you can first think about it then answer. Hey, I have a question. Let's assume a stock intrinsic value approximately 30% higher is higher than the current market price. But the fundamentals are quite good when it comes to long-term investment. My question here is one, should we wait for the stock to reach its intrinsic value? Or two, should we buy and accumulate the stock slowly till it reaches intrinsic value and then add huge amounts when it reaches interesting value? I think it's getting confused. He's saying the value going down. Uh, I do have fear that I may miss an opportunity. His problem is he has FOMO. That he might miss an opportunity to buy a stock yeah. waiting for the correct price. Is the price above the intrinsic value now or below? He's, he's a bit confused. He's saying let's assume a stock's intrinsic value is higher than the current market price. Okay. Let's that means it's trading yeah. lower price than, than the intrinsic intrins value. Okay. Let's look at both scenarios because maybe yeah. you mean meant to say the opposite. Correct. But uh, if your stock is trading above the intrinsic value, then look, intrinsic value can be determined by many things. You can also look at growth rate. 
Intrinsic value doesn't only mean what assets are within the company. So if you think that the stock will match up to its, uh, if the intrinsic value factoring in growth is something which is higher than the price it's currently at using discounted cash flow, then certainly you can buy it. But I would never recommend buying a stock below intrinsic value even after doing discounted cash flow and accounting for growth because there's simply no way to make money. It can be a wonderful company. Pitlight is a great company. Nestle is a great company. But I cannot touch these companies because they're trading way above their intrinsic value. Although however much I consume Maggie. I consume Maggie daily but I can't uh, buy Nestle. Very, I can't buy Nestle. So the idea here Wizard. is um, what Howard Marks said. No asset is a great asset at all prices. You have to figure out even a terrible asset can be a wonderful asset at the right price. So don't form emotional attachments to companies. If it's a good company, it has to be at a good price. If it's not at a good price, it's not a company you should look at. Well said. Now, there's a second part to the question. If, if uh, there is FOMO, don't feel FOMO. There's a lot of time. The length of the runway matters. And uh, as Warren Buffett says, in life, you'll have about three big opportunities in terms of stocks. So don't worry wait and watch you'll get that perfect opportunity where it comes right within your area of competence and that you can purchase correct what's the important thing is when these opportunities come you should have liquid in your account so remember always to cut your expenses and keep some aside for this rainy day when it does rain so you can go out with your buckets and catch some money yeah anyway if you guys suddenly noticed we have a guest who has appeared with us. It is Anand himself. Shaswath has invited Anand from behind the camera to come and join us in front of the camera so we may have his inputs as we answer these questions. So Shaswath, Aishwarya Ayer has asked and people have replied so I thought you could also put in your inputs into this. Sure. I want to know about books to read by a stay home, a stay at home mom like me who is from an IT background. One book you all guys often talk about is Intentional Inten Investor. What are the other books to read to know more about economic investment, etc. Whatever you guys talk, seriously fall in love with economics after starting to follow Anand sir and team. To this, Arun Ananda has replied, One Up on Wall Street, Joys of Compounding, Changing New Order, or Changing World Order, Richer, Wiser, Happier, A Little History of Economics, Skill, Skin in the Game, Fooled by Randomness, The Black Swan, A Random Walk Down Wall Street, the help would take help from chat GPT if you don't understand the concepts or definitions. Meditations on stoicism. I think this guy is a big fan of yours, man, because all it looks like your books. Then uh, movie has further added things. Start with Wealth of Nations, written by the father of economics to learn economics. I think we should first recommend Anand's books. Yes. A lot of you always pull my leg and Shash's leg saying we do not promote Anand's books because... I we assume, assume you've already read, read those books because if you've not read those books, there's no way you're understanding what, anything what we're saying. Yeah, because those are the real ABCs Anand discovered in those books. So I strongly suggest you start with Anand's books. Even if you don't read the red book, read the green book. Correct. Yeah. Aside from this, what else would you say we should read? Yeah, there are some decent uh, recommendations. I would not say take on Wealth of Nations because it's it's not something. Where, yes, if you're ambitious, you can definitely try. It. Out, you can take out the abridged version or maybe uh, do a course online which breaks it down. Because Wealth of Nations as a book is very tough to break down even for an economics major. I'm an economics major and I'm formally studying economics and I find the book difficult to get through. So that is something which may be outside your comfort zone. But other than that, let's look at uh, the other recommendations. One Up on Wall Street is great. We can also look at a book called Taking a Random Walk Down Wall Street, which is another book. It's also there in the list. Yeah. And uh, you also can uh, look at a few other books. Yeah, The Education of a Value Investor is nice. And uh, Richest Man in Babylon, which we've talked about. Atomic Habits, which we've talked about. Meditations is great, but I feel like it's too philosophical of a pick for the question. Yes, it has nothing to do with economics. Yeah, nothing to do with economics. Yes, it'll, that's completely out of the this thing. But um, apart from that, these are the books which you should definitely look at. And uh, if you're interested in Warren Buffett's life, then you can look at The Making of an American Capitalist, which looks at his life. And uh, Snowball is another book which you can look at. Okay, Arjun K is asking you this. You have told us many times about buying stock and forgetting it. Okay, at what situation should we sell a stock? This is something we have never heard about in this forum. Like, how do you check for red flags in a company? 
what should be the sell principle and which you have invested when you bought the shares at what point do you think you should sell does uncle warren ever sell his stocks uncle warren does sell his stock and my uncle sitting here is so the he best one to ask and uh, yeah who sell a stock when you think the company is doing badly a or you need the money or c you found a better investment there you go it's simple as abc first if you need the money please go ahead and sell two the company is not performing properly something is wrong there's a change in leadership or something in the news in the company is not making sense to you anymore please sell it three you found a better horse which is going to take you further with your money definitely you should catch the better horse these are three reasons you should consider about selling any company and never be afraid to uh, correct your opinion because keen said as the facts change my opinion change so you should change your opinions when the facts change yes irfan mohit is asking i check my portfolio twice thrice a week just to see if any if any stock i purchase is going down in value so that i may accumulate more i promise myself not to sell unless necessary would love to hear your comments on this habit yes if you have the balls of steel in order to be able to buy more as the knife drops or the metaphorical knife drops good on you and it's definitely something all of you should consider doing because the logic is as simple as this i asked my uncle the same thing just uh, in 2020 when i was uh, still getting into investing and uh, a stock of which i bought was going down and what he told me was the logic is simple if you are willing to buy a stock at 100 rupees and nothing has changed fundamentally and it's fallen to 70 rupees then you should be even more excited to buy it at 70 rupees i mean it falls to 50 rupees and you should be even more excited to buy it at 50 rupees this is provided your analysis is correct you haven't made any uh, mistakes in your analysis then the logic dictates that you should be more excited when the price drops of a good which you think is great and valued much more the well, the best example will be tata motors or tata steel tata motors fell from dvr fell from 300 to 30 and took 6 years to go back to 300 i bought it before it went to 300 i watched it at 300 i watched it fall to 30 in between i added some more and on the way up i added some more and now it's back at 300 in 2008 tata still hit 1000 when the elevated chorus took place it dropped to 250 it's now back about 1000 but you don't see it as 1000 because a 10 rupee stock has been split as a 1 rupee stock and itc is another company which uh, you've bought for more than what it was trading at then for a during the covid period it was just battered yeah. and we continued buying it then and we still continue buying yes. it today yeah i still buy it today yes there you go question answered next one all the way from sydney sudhakar jagdishan is asking us is it wise to practice is it a wise practice to score ones and twos in common stocks during market fluctuations to reach a century at the end of the year i mean buy a good reputed company stock and come out with a capital of 5% or 10% profit where the profit remains as an unrealized share please discuss if possible no no what he is trying to say is he buys the stock the price goes up he takes out the money invested and whatever is the profit he has made is remained as left unsold stocks okay but this is not a correct method to do because if your company is strong enough you should continue to hold, hold on it to it and add on to it add basically, on to yeah, it basically what he's saying is i buy put 10 rupees and i bought yeah the price is appreciated 20 rupees yes. i remove the 10 rupees i put no and so now all i have is all the profit, profit is my stock no that I is removed my money that is say, the same as trading yeah correct that is the same as trading so that sounds to me like you're trading not scoring one what i believe is scoring ones and twos is if you buy a government bond and sit on it when you have nothing else to do that is scoring a one or a two because that is very low returns but it's some return so that is something which i believe is a one or a two but i don't believe uh, trading in the market is scoring a one or a two correct we are against trading we are investors here and uh, we do not encourage trading because we do not do trading and we know nothing about trading so yeah. we don't encourage it here we are value investors and like i said the three reasons we only decide to sell is if you need the money or something fundamentally changed about the company or you found something better to invest in these are the only reasons we sell we do not try and book profits and take our money out and do this 5% 10% all these kind of calculations we don't try and do this is our, our personal opinion of course what works for you works for you there are many ways to go to rome our road is this shrikant devanathan is asking best time to buy a house in emi just before searching for a bride for marriage it shows that you are 
capable guy for any girl's father. If you're in a commanding position, matches will increase tenfold. What do you think, Shashwat? As a bachelor, me and him are not bachelors. You are a bachelor, Bhaiya. So, do you think you can impress your would-be father-in-law? Okay, in case you are about to get married. Do you think he'll be impressed? Or let's say, put it the other way around. If you were the father and your daughter's boyfriend comes to you and says, Sir, I bought a house. Look at it. Look at my strength. I bought a house. It's folly because uh, if you aren't able to pay back the EMI and now you're saddled with both a spouse and children maybe, then and you're not able to pay an EMI, you look like an even bigger fool. And... Uh, you have to always look at the long term. Yes, short term gratification is great. You always want to have a spouse. You want to get married and so on and so forth. But uh, the idea is that you always want to look at long term investments. And uh, a house right now may not make the most sense and may not be may put you in the most financially secure position. I'll let my uncle feel the rest of this question. Yes. Would you be impressed, Anand sir, if oh. a would be suitor comes for our niece? And okay. say, sir, okay. Anand, sir, okay. I bought a house in EMI. I don't think, I have never bought a house. Hmm. And I have never lived in a, a house in my name. And uh, nor have I bought any land in my 55 years. No. The I have speculated in Minot's name when the real estate market was right. But that was a pure investment decision which yes. we bought and sold. And we sold very profitably. So the question for me is remains only as an investor is whether I'll make money or not. In current real estate market in India, I am not going to make money. And if my father-in-law is going to choose me as a son-in-law only based on property, property, then I'm very sorry, I, he, he will not choose me. Yeah. But I'll also feel that something is wrong with him because if he cannot make the simple economic calculation of what is good. Properties in India give 1 or 2 percent. FTs give you 6 or 7 percent. So it's a no-brainer. And that's why I look very puzzled when you ask me. It's, uh, it's, a, it's great folly to be to fall into this trap. So, Karthik is asking, how to book profits in a bull market? First, you don't book profits. That's the idea here. You hold on to it. Yes, uh, when the tide goes out and the market cracks, you'll definitely lose all your unrealized gains. But... That is not the end-all be-all. If these companies are fundamentally great and you've made some good analysis and you've bought some great companies, you should purchase more when the market goes down and reinvest all the dividend yield which you're getting from it. And uh, there's no reason for you to book profits unless the three things which he mentioned are one of the factors involved. If you really need the money and not need the money to buy a house or need the money to buy the newest bike or the newest car, but uh, really need the money for some sort of life-saving operation or uh, for... Even for a car, if you need it for work, then maybe. But uh, definitely something which you should consider not booking your profits in a bull market. Let your winners ride and cut your losses. Yes. Cut. Sell and the stocks which are making losses and don't touch the damn stock which is making money for you. Yes. And if you realize something in this channel, we never talk about bull and we never talk about bear. Yeah. Because we're not traders. These are all media terminologies created by traders to entice you into buying. Saying the market is going up, go, 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 go. Oh no, the market is going down. Oh no, no, no. no, no, no. We do not look at it like that. We don't look at any stock market. You buy up. a company, you are a owner of the company. Correct. And as long as you're investing in the business and you believe in the business, please buy into it. The day you don't believe in the business, please sell out. Move out. Mohandas Mani is asking, my questions are given below. One, sectors which are likely to grow more compared to other sectors. Two, investing in regular, direct, is there any difference between the, from the charges levied? I don't know what that means. I know. I okay, then let me finish the other question. How to purchase bonds in Indian markets? How to invest in foreign equities and foreign index funds? So if you want to invest abroad, the new tax collected at source is a big dampener. So you'll have to move money abroad and invest from abroad. And the government can anyway say, no, no, bad boys, you don't keep yeah. American stock. Even the S&P 500 fund got into trouble. And if you want more information on bonds and such, you can reach us at the email below. Yeah, you can reach us at the email below. Or there's a book, the bond book. What is Mary Tau? Anit Tau. Anit Tau has written a very good book on bonds. Yes. What is this investing in regular direct? Is there any Okay. Different? Regular is uh, through the distributor. 
directors you invest with the mutual fund directly it does make a difference you pay some commission the commission is very low in index funds and higher in active managed funds so if you can if you are not technologically challenged like me you can always use the direct fund route yeah so which sectors do you think buddha is going to be smiling on Uh, it's not. <laughs> we, we already made a. Yeah. We already made a video on that. You can uh, refer to that. Yes, and anyone who has a crystal ball like Anand said many times can see the future. He'll be a very rich man. We do not predict the future here. We don't claim to know any secret which you guys don't have access to. That we can tell you which sector is going to do very well and which sector is going to do very badly. Hindsight, everybody can look back and say how the weather, how the weather was yesterday. Even I can tell, predict hundred percent. Yeah, hindsight uh, bias is always. easy nobody has any idea what is going to happen in the near future yeah so if you buy stocks at below intrinsic value which you should calculate yourself and you have sufficient margin of safety you are set yeah last question then we will continue the rest of the questions in a part 2 video because this video has gotten quite long and quite lengthy so i thought we'll put a pin on it after this question which is from sudhir i have two queries in general what i have understood in companies get monies from public only during the ipo later the stock price fluctuation or spike will most likely be profitable only to others who hold on to it then why should a company struggle to keep stock price higher grow and ensure the company stocks are respected too when actual intrinsic value of a stock is just 100 why should i buy it when its current pe is at 20 35 etc is it not like hiring a person paying 1k when you can generate a revenue of 100 rupees basically i want to know why should i believe in itc which is currently priced at 400 will 10 years later be 4000 rupees and some sort of a muddled question yes. but uh, i there's one interesting there's one interesting point which uh, you brought up which was that why do companies have an incentive to keep their stock prices up correct one because management profits from it because of something called stock options which uh, is great for management and it pays off management because they also have a stake in this company so if they keep the stock price up it means they're keeping their net worth up that is your principal and agent problem which george soros talks about in uh, one of his lectures financial lectures he says that all economic problems i don't know if i agree with this but he says all economic problems fundamentally stem from the principal agent problem i think information asymmetry is the larger underlying theme here but that being said the principal agent problem says if uh, me and my uncle get into a contract and he hires me to do something for him and he can't monitor me doing it there's no way in which he can make sure that i act in the way which is best for him so that is the principal and agent problem i'll only act in the way which is best for me and if that aligns with his interests then well and good but if it doesn't then i benefit at his loss there's one more reason why they keep stock prices high if you are a growth company like microsoft in this case microsoft is paying for cash for activation blizzard but the other way you can do it is you can pay by using stock as capital facebook did that with whatsapp yeah. they paid gave them stock buffett also did that buffett gave dexter shoes berkshire hathaway stocks in stock yeah in stock the cash and he said that is the biggest mistake he has made because the stock will be worth billions of dollars and he cannot believe that he bought a different brand with uh, so much billion dollars so it, one other reason why professional investors keep stock prices high is if they want to raise more money they can always issue those stocks correct and a great example recent is elon musk buying twitter he uses tesla stocks to buy twitter and he wanted those stock prices to stay so he was doing all kinds of things on twitter keeping tesla nice and boiling for himself so you could play and with the story of vmware nvidia and then michael dell who owns vmware is another interesting story okay. thank you for watching be rich i enjoyed doing this q and a at least a part of it shashwat and vinod did the full part of it i hope you guys enjoyed the show we will do some more in the coming days thank you for supporting be rich click the like button for this video turn on the bell notification subscribe to our channel and if you have done all these uh, pass this video to your friends and relatives and have them take a look once again i thank you for your support for be rich thank you wait there's also a disclaimer which is that none of this is investment advice and we are in sabhi registered investment advisors 
we are not advising you to buy or sell the stocks yes and that's why uh, please keep your in for future q and a's please keep your questions uh, less specific and more generic so we can give you pointers based on the economy and fundamentals of investing rather than specific stocks yes right. that would be better and you would gain more yes once again i thank you for your support for be rich and please keep those comments coming and those questions coming and i'll get shashwat to come here and answer all of them Thank you. Thank you. I am in Tokyo on work on the 5th of August 2023. I have a lot of following in Japan, Tokyo. Those who want to meet me in Tokyo on 5th August, kindly drop me an email on the address given below or contact us on WhatsApp there. My team would get in touch with you and facilitate the meeting. Once again, I thank you for your support for Be Rich. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.